family and friends, we want to welcome you to this special celebration of life service for our dearly beloved Walter Hilza. We're so grateful that you're here. Thank you for coming and for supporting his wife, Pat, in this moment of sorrow and for celebrating his life today. Welcome to you all. in me, though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. It's a piece that Walter and I performed many times. And um, he, he, uh, he just really brought the piece to life. I mean, there's, there's notes on the page, but yet um, he, he tended to be on the slow side. And I said, uh, I would say to him, Walter, maybe, maybe we could bump the tempo up a little bit. And uh, he said, well, you know, I'm, it's, it's going to be a little bit slower, you know, uh, 10 minutes from now, you know, I'm getting older. And... Walter, this is for you, Walter. And then after the course ended, um, we started working together as, as musicians, and he gave me his Psalm 85, a wonderful piece for voice and, and organ, and we started working on that together, and uh, it was a lot of fun singing, but it also was pretty challenging, uh, especially for me just being a junior. And so we had a lot of fun working on it, but eventually I did mention to him, you know, this is probably one of the more challenging pieces I've worked on. And he realized, oh, wow, I, I don't think I thought about it, but I probably gave you one of my hardest pieces <laughs> that I've written. And the piece that Eileen and I are going to perform for you next is Psalm 27, which Walter always said of all the pieces he wrote for me, that was his favorite piece. He was really proud of that piece felt like he achieved a new level in his writing, and so it felt just really right to bring that and share that with you all. And he's been you know, such an inspiration, somebody that was playing and growing and developing all the way till the very end throughout his whole life.
I'm probably the one who knows him the longest. I studied with Walter from the age of 14. His mom, Elsa Hilza, was my piano teacher from the age of nine. At that time, he was organist at St. Luke's Lutheran, and I went for my first lesson. And he's explaining, you know, that you have three lines of music, the pedal boards are like another keyboard, you have to redistribute your weight, and then he asked me to play a note. Now, I'm 14, so I'm two inches shorter than I am today. And I reached for the note, and I promptly fell off the bench. <laughs> and I remember he had these horn-rimmed glasses, and he's peering at me over the bench, very worried. He's, are you OK? His mother, as I said, was a very fine pianist. His father, Bruno Hilza, was a composer and a musician. So it's no wonder that he was preordained to become a musician. Uh, Walter's handshake, those of you who shook his hand, you remember he was double-jointed. I can't even begin to imitate that sort of swooping arc. So basically, I learned I would just stick my hand straight out and he would shake my hand first. Because I never knew, I never knew. In 1979, he did a concert at Alice Tully Hall, Lincoln Center. And it was a big deal, you know, the New York Times critic is in the audience. And um, he wore a tuxedo, as one did. Uh, but the problem, his mother was saying, was that his French cuffs got stuck in between the keys. And so then his mother was having a heart attack, because the critic. But then his mother had another heart attack, because after intermission, he had pushed his sleeves all the way up past his elbows, which made him rather look like Popeye. But it, at least they didn't stick in the keys. Um, in 1980, there was a subway strike in New York City. It lasted several weeks. He walked all the way from Times Square across the 59th Street Bridge to come into Queens to give me an organ lesson. That is a dedicated teacher. So my last image before I play is, um, I'm, I'm sure Mr. Hills is up there waiting his turn at the pearly gates to take his place on the organ bench at the celestial organ. And when he plays, he will fill the heavens with glorious, glorious music. So. Um, Walter Hilza, musician, may his memory be a blessing. In between rehearsal and the service at Redeemer on Sundays uh, was what Walter liked to call muffin time, which along with many muffins always involved coffee. I can't think of a single time where Walter finished all of his coffee in time for the service. He would usually bring it onto the stage at Hunter, which technically was against the rules, and set it on the organ to sit between hymns. In fact, he often blamed slow tempos on his lack of coffee. One Sunday, towards the end of the prelude, while the instrumentalist he was accompanying was playing his unaccompanied cadenza, Walter leisurely finished his coffee, set the empty cup down, and came right back in on time without missing a beat and finished the piece. He told me stories about Nadia Boulanger and Maurice Durifle, about living in Paris and playing organ at a memorial service for Hindemith. We talked about our mutual love of cats, he wrote several beautiful and inventive psalm settings for me. I became his feet on hymns that worked well on organ, but not so well on piano. He was my pen pal during the pandemic, and we sent the music we were writing back and forth through the mail. We laughed about his annual fall and spring haircuts. I could measure the seasons based on the length of his white hair and whether or not you could see more or less of it peeking over the top of the organ. Walter helped me to see the beauty of God through his music the patience of God in his teaching, the laughter of God and his love of a good joke. This next piece we are going to perform is a piece that only Walter could write. It is a tangible expression of him and a part of him that still remains here with us. Thank you. 
Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Family, friends, we're here today to celebrate our brother Walter Hilsa and to honor his life. And we're here today to remember that in our sorrow we can grieve with hope. Many of us had the pleasure of knowing Walter, some of us for many, many years, and all of us were blessed by his amazing musical talent. What a man, what a gift. In some Christian traditions, what we're doing now is called a celebration of home going, of going home. And it is a beautiful reminder of what is actually true, of what has actually happened, has happened with Walter's departure from us. He has gone home. Hi, my name is Miriam Burns and I'm music director uh, and conductor at Redeemer Presbyterian Church's East Side Classical Service and I've known Walter for over 25 years. Psalm 33 verse 3 says, sing to him a new song, play skillfully with a, with a shout of joy. Every time I heard and, and watched Walter play it was always with a sense of joy that was just infectious. I first got a, uh, a taste of Walter's uh, first-hand uh, musicianship when I was turning pages when he was playing Bucks to Hoot It. And I was just so blown away about the magnificence of his playing. It had a great effect on me. At Redeemer, we would have uh, very large chamber orchestras for some of the um, bigger holiday services. And because Walter was playing the organ and had a very special skill, of being able to reduce a full score uh, at the organ. And this means reading the transposing instruments from the full score, and he would fill in the blanks of, of the orchestra that I didn't, didn't have. So, uh, and by the way, those full scores were usually many scores that he, he was still able to read. I'm so thankful to have uh, gotten to know Walter, both musically and personally, and uh, just experiencing his music. I'd like to invite his nephew, George, to come and speak about him now. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna keep this short because as I was watching all of you play the organ, it just reminded me of when I was like five or six years old, I believe it's St. Luke, um, watching him, Bob and Weave behind there. He looked like basically a mad scientist. <laughs> And I was always impressed, and as I got older, I appreciated, you know, what he did more and more. Um, to just look, you know, at that pipe organ, uh, the organ itself, it's just, <laughs> it's amazing what's going on back there. So, basically, I'm going to just start with a little story. My first, about my first hockey game. It was New York Rangers versus St. Louis Blues, December 1974. <laughs> 1974, wow. I was seven years old. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with hockey, but back in those days, they had what they called bench clearing brawls. <laughs> so both benches would empty out and the ice was filled with 30, 40 guys just basically beating each other up. So I was hooked. And from that time until now, we shared a common interest with hockey and went to many games together over the decades spent many hours discussing hockey, and which was a shared passion, obviously. I mean, I will miss meeting him in front of Madison Square Garden, seeing him smile and saying, putting his hand out, shaking my hand and saying, nephew, are you ready for some high culture? <laughs> I will miss our conversations. I will miss his puns. I will miss, I mean, I've known the man all my life. I'll miss, I'll miss the man.
we go celebrating the life of Walter Hilsa, let us raise our heads in hope and victory and receive the Lord's benediction. Give us courage, give Pat his wife peace, and remind us that not even death is strong enough to separate us from your love and care.